Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daniel Smith. I'm a product marketing manager here at iContact, and I'm really excited to have everyone attending our Mastering Social Media and Email Marketing in 60 Minutes webinar. Uh, we have a lot of people attending today, and we're really excited to share um, some of our social media marketing best practices with you, as well as the latest improvements to our social media integration social tools. We have a lot of resources for you around social media marketing, email marketing, and um, our and social tools, our social media integration. You can find these on our website at iContact.com. I'm going to hand this over to um, Peter Golly. Peter is a product owner here at iContact. He is an expert in social media, and he's going to walk you through some social media best practices and why social media and email marketing are such a great fit together. So Peter, it's all yours. Thank you, Daniel. If you're tweeting about the webinar, feel free to use the hashtag shown. And as always, you can follow us on Twitter or find us on Facebook. A quick introduction. My name is Peter Galley. I'm a senior product manager here at iContact. Uh, and with me today is also Matt Davis. And you just heard from Daniel Smith. Matt Davis will be presenting our iContact social tools um, and walking through a demo of some of the newest and greatest features that we've just launched. But today I'll be focused on how do you use email and social together. The growth of social media. When you think of social media, you, you have to think of it as a, as a two-way conversation. Your customers, your prospects are already having conversations about your products, your services, and your brand online through blogs, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, as well as other social networks. The key for you as a business is to participate in that conversation, either through uh, sharing content or through following up and responding to complaints or issues. And I think as we look and we see the abundance and growth of social media, we're seeing it all over, online, on TV, on print. And one of the challenges a lot of folks face with social media is there's so much out there. How do I pay attention and how do I create content that's meaningful? And we're going to dive into some of those uh, challenges in a little bit later. And I think the key to take away with this slide is you don't always have to create the content. You can curate it. You can find valuable content and pass that along. Um, so use social media. Participate in the conversation is the key takeaway for this slide. So why social media? That's a really uh, great question. I think the first point is, is that it's growing explosively. We have over 750 million Facebook users. 50% of which log in every day. So just thinking about how many people are going to Facebook and how many minutes are being spent uh, and how many eyeballs that's capturing. Another key statistic is that there's over a couple hundred million users on Twitter, and Twitter is extremely real-time, and it's a very, very powerful way of, of sharing real-time or even just general information about your business online. Also, LinkedIn now just recently jumped into the number two most popular social network, passing MySpace. So again, lots of growth and lots of uh, eyeballs and minutes are being spent in social media. And again, those minutes and those eyeballs are attracting a lot of not just consumers in our personal lives, but also businesses. Small, medium-sized businesses are embracing social media at, at a growing rate. And what we're seeing is that this is a great opportunity to Expand, expand your marketing mix to touch on social media. And again, when we talk about email marketing, social media and email marketing complement each other. And when we look at social media more broadly, as I mentioned earlier, whether it's online or print or email marketing, social media plays a, a critical and cohesive part of that integrated marketing campaign. So again, social media is growing. Businesses are jumping onto that social media bandwagon and participating in that conversation. And they're allocating more and more of their budget dollars uh, to social media. With that, I wanted to ask a quick poll question. The question is, how many of you are currently combining your email and social media marketing? We'll uh, continue on to the presentation. We'll share the results with you in a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about email and social together. So you as an email marketer, you have your subscribers, and you've worked really hard to grow your email list. Maybe you're just starting out, you have 100. Maybe you're a little bit larger, you have thousands of subscribers, and they're used to seeing your emails, and they're participating through open, opening it, clicking on it, and perhaps they're forwarding it to a friend. You know, it's hard to measure that. 
what you want to do is start to combine your email and social together so that your subscribers are empowered and enabled to share your content with their Facebook fans and their Twitter followers. And again, what that's going to do is increase the reach of your email to a broader new audience that may not have known that you have an email or may not even be familiar with your brand. So it's, it's also the power of word of mouth. So if that continues, you can imagine they're, they're forwarding the email or passing on the content about your brand to their Facebook fans and their, face, and their Twitter followers. So the really key here is it allows you as a marketer to strengthen your brand. We did a recent survey of our customers, and one of their top goals with using social media was strengthening their brand. And it leverages word of mouth, which is key influencer in purchase decisions. So now that we've really understood sort of the tip of the iceberg in combining email plus social, and we're going to dive into this um, in a little bit more detail with four concrete ta tactics that you can use as an email marketer to combine your email and social, as well as Matt, who's going to dive into demos to show how easy it is to do this with iContact's new social tools uh, upgrades. So with that, let's do a quick uh, show the survey of the results for the poll. So we can see here it's, it's fairly evenly um, spread out. Looks like most people are either sometimes or often using it, a little bit over 50%. And about a quarter of you don't use social media marketing quite yet. So this, is, this webinar will fit this, uh, your needs quite well. It'll help everyone either leverage their existing use of email and social together and take it to the next level, or it'll help folks who aren't using social media sort of overcome some of those challenges and hurdles. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. So let's dive into a, a quick maybe use case, if you will, of how you can use email and social together. So when you think about the, you know, starting at the top, you create and send your email. You spend quite a bit of time coming up with your email design, the images, the links, the copy. And so there's a lot of time invested in your email. And of course, you want to send that to your email subscribers but you also want to share your email across your social networks. So if you have a Twitter account, a Facebook page, share your email, broaden the scope there. Even if someone is a Twitter follower or Facebook fan, they may not even know that you have an email list. So by sharing that way, you, you broaden the strength, you broaden the, your email, you broaden the reach of your email. And then also you want to enable the email to be easily shared with their network. So again, propagating and engaging with an extended social network. What that's going to do is take your email to new audiences that will attract new email subscribers who will have already seen your email and will already sort of be comfortable with your brand um, and, and had a, perhaps a recommendation from, from their social network to sign up for the email. So that's, that word of mouth and the fact that they actually seen your email before signing up is really going to create a an engaged email subscriber. And again, you track all that results and activity and feed that back into how you create your content. So you want to look and measure how, you know, how you're creating your content. Is it resonating? Is it being shared? And then feeding that back into making, uh, creating your content um, in a more social sharing way. So I think that's the key for this is to think about it as a life cycle and think about across every single step. And we're going to dive into a little bit more detail with some tactics. Uh, a little bit later in the webinar um, about how you can specifically get started with that. So does email and social work? 80% of marketers say that social sharing extends the reach of email content to new markets, and 78% say it increases brand reputation and awareness. And that's according to Marketing Sherpa and their email marketing benchmark survey. I think the key takeaway for this slide is, is that we are seeing the results of combining your email and social, and we're seeing that it works. Uh, broad, a broad spectrum of marketers are trying it, and they're saying that it works. So that's a really strengthens uh, the case to combine your email and social media together. That being said, there are some challenges. As I mentioned earlier, we did a survey of our customers, and 414 of them responded and said that there were some key challenges with social media that they, they were facing. Um, by far, the number one was lack of time, followed by uh, unsure to determine ROI. And there were quite a few there that were around lack of knowledge, learning curve, lack of resources. And one of the reasons why we put this webinar together is to help address some of those challenges. 
So I'm going to talk a lot about the learning curve and the lack of knowledge, and Matt will really dive into how easy it is to use eye contact social tools to overcome some of those time hurdles that we're facing. And we're going to talk a little bit about ROI as one of our tactics a little bit later. With that, let's dive into one of our specific and the first of our specific tactics. If you send it, share it. What do I mean by that? One, whenever you send a promotion, a newsletter uh, to your subscribers, seize the opportunity to post that on your social network and encourage other folks to post it on their social networks. And the idea here is to grow your email virally as your followers share it on their networks. One thing to note with this strategy is that your email content should not be the only thing you share on your social networks. It should be part of an overall social media marketing strategy. So email marketing, again, leverage that. If you send it, share it. And there's a couple of examples there where you've seen uh, some folks who, who put the Facebook, the Twitter, and LinkedIn icons to, to encourage folks to visit them on those social networks and join their social networks as well as uh, share the emails. And I think one key exception as noted there is anything that has billing information or is personally identifiable, transaction related, or autoresponders uh, should not be shared. So this really applies to your, your general email marketing newsletter. The second tactic I'd like to dive into is what I like to call always be asking. Each email you send is an opportunity to expand your social network. So when you think about that, here's a good example from Mint where it says, let's connect, and they have a, a like button there, and it, it points people to their Facebook page to like them on their Facebook page, and they've got some images that they've taken um, and incorporated that into their email from their Facebook fans. And again, the call to action is, is very clean, it's very attractive, and, and sort of bold, let's connect. And again, they're using and leveraging their email marketing to grow their social media marketing. But it also goes the other way around. Looking at your online assets, whether it's your site, your blog, your Facebook page, um, as an example here from iContact, where iContact has taken it is they've, we've actually used our Facebook fan page to encourage our visitors to that fan page to actually sign up for our email newsletter. So again, it's, it's a cycle. You can use your email to grow your social media marketing, uh, and you grow your followers and fan base. And then also use your online assets like your blog, your Facebook page, your Twitter account to point people back to sign up to newsletters. So again, it's a positive cycle, and I think the key there, key there is always be asking. The third, I mean, one of my favorite tactics is uh, extending the life. When we look at how email marketers, one of the biggest challenges they face is how do I make my email more relevant? And one way to do that is to extend the life of the email. So a good example is to repurpose or recycle your content to get more mileage out of a single newsletter. Again, you've spent quite a bit of time creating that email newsletter, uh, the, the copy, the design, the visuals. Leverage that time to repurpose and recycle some of that content online. The other component I like to say for extending the life is reposting. So look at parts of the newsletter. Maybe a, a certain section of your newsletter got a lot of clicks or a lot of interest from your email subscribers, post that section or post part of that to your social media networks. That's a great way, again, to repost specific articles. And lastly, look at refreshing older content with something new. Giving it a slight update by working in something a little bit more timely or more relevant will uh, help you turn what's old into something new. And again, extend the life of your email content that you've worked so hard to create. So when I think about this, it's repurpose, repost, and refresh to extend the life of your email. Last but not least is measure. And this is my favorite tactic. And a lot of this, a lot of times marketers fall into the trap of thinking about measurement at the end. And even in this presentation, we've made it the fourth tactic. But the reality is <coughs> that this should be the first thing you think about in terms of what your goal is when you, when you step put into social media marketing, or when you're creating your email, or when you're sending that tweet or that Facebook post. What's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Once you think about your goal, you can come to accurately measure it. So a good example of content engagement could be things like responses, retweets, comments, uh, likes, 
any time that someone is engaging with your content. Another example could be you want to grow your fan base or your followers. So that's, a, that's an example of network engagement. And the other side of it is even taking it one step further, as you participate in the conversation, are you able to influence the direction or influence uh, your social network to the way that you want them to behave? So again, I want to reemphasize, thinking about the measurement is really critical before you even begin step one. So with those four tactics, let's quick talk about some takeaway points. First, social plus email equals true engagement. When you think about email, it's a rich medium. It's one to many. It's, it's you sending out your message to many folks. When you look at social media, it's multiple people to multiple people. It's a very dynamic. It's changing in real time. And you want to participate in both ways and give your customers the opportunity to listen to your brand in any way they choose. Maybe they prefer email as a, per, a preferred method, or per, perhaps they like to interact with you on Twitter and Facebook. So being in both social and email and combining them together, you're going to get a true engagement with your customers. Capitalize on what you already know. Many of you are already comfortable with email marketing, and I encourage you to take small baby steps if you're just getting started. Uh, we've given you some key examples of how maybe you can take your email and just add a little bit of content to it to grow to help grow your Twitter user base or, or Facebook fans. So again, take your email, extend it a little bit, and, and complement your social media with it. And last takeaway point is don't be scared of testing the unknown. And this is really important. There's a lot of people who, who aren't comfortable, who have a lack of knowledge or a lack of time, and they think there's this large learning curve. One of the things we want our customers uh, to understand is that there is a lot to going on in social media. It's a lot like having a conversation with a lot of people at once. It can be daunting. But don't be scared of testing. Don't be scared of participating. Because whether or not you're there, they're having a conversation about your brand. With that being said, I encourage folks, don't wait. Get started today. 71% of businesses have or planning to integrate email and social media. And I wanted to emphasize Eye Contact has a social media marketing white paper, uh, which is an introduction for email marketers to social media marketing, as well as finding us on Twitter, uh, at Eye Contact, or on Facebook. So definitely get involved. Matt will we'll take some questions right now, and then Matt will uh, do a great demo of our new Eye Contact social tools. Thanks, Peter. Um, so we're going to go through about five minutes worth of questions right now, and then, again, at the end of the webinar, we will take live questions um, as time permits. Peter, the first question comes from April, and she asks, does eye contact support Google Plus and or LinkedIn? At this time, no. We are working with our customers to understand the adoption of both LinkedIn and, and um, Google Plus. We've got a lot of feedback that LinkedIn is, is very popular, so we're definitely looking forward to implementing that in the near future. Another quick quick tidbit on Google Plus. Uh, Google actually has not made their API for Google Plus public yet. Uh, so any developers outside of Google, uh, they don't have access to it at this time. Uh, but as soon as they do, uh, we're definitely going to seriously take a look at that. Okay. So the next question comes from David. He asked, how do you separate your personal Facebook from business Facebook? So Facebook allows you to create a personal page and a fan page. And what you want to do is, using following Facebook's terms and conditions, you want to create a business page or a fan page. And doing so gives you functionality that businesses would, would find beneficial. So definitely, I would recommend you create separate personas, if you will, one for your personal and one for your business. Next question comes from Lynn. She asks, if you have a personal Facebook page and then attach a company fan page to it, and then connect that account to your email through my contact, where does it put it? Personal page, fan page, or both? When you send an email through iContact, there's there's an option for uh, post send to Facebook or post to Facebook. And if you check that box, we actually, um, right. if you have an account just set up on Facebook, let's say you have five pages associated with your personal profile, we actually let you choose whether you want to post it to your personal wall or any of your other uh, pages as well. Yeah, it's the newsletter uh, sign up. The send page. Yeah, the newsletter sign up is the only one that works with fan pages. Correct. Jay asks, what do you mean recycle? 
So I think the key with recycling is you, you send that content out there and, and you want to maybe share that with your social network. Maybe you sent something a couple months ago and you have to remember with Twitter and Facebook, a lot of times people are missing, there's so much going on on those social networks, so many conversations, they may have missed that conversation. So one technique and, and tip I tell people is to remind them to, once, let's say you post something on Twitter in the morning, maybe you want to change the language a little bit and post it again in the afternoon or evening because folks may have missed it. So that's a, that's a great example of, of recycling that content um, and just changing it a little bit, right? But, but again, having that same link away and that same call to action, roughly. Jennifer asks, what are some ways to build large followings on Facebook? That's a great, uh, great question. Uh, I'll give you a good example. One of the, one of the techniques iContact has done is we've done giveaways. So one example could be having a special promotion for Facebook followers or Facebook fans to encourage people to like your brand on Facebook. And we've seen that that's worked very well. And the research we've seen also indicates that one of the major reasons why folks follow brands on social media is for special promotion and they want to feel special. Dahlia asks, since I have a new business online, I don't have clients yet, when do you recommend to open a Facebook page for fans? So, yeah, I definitely would recommend that you start right now. There's no, no need to wait. Even if you don't have any fans or even there's very few people participating on social media talking about your brand, you can start the conversation by even having a Facebook page. As you know, there's so many people already, 750 million people already on Facebook. So start the conversation. Create a fan page right now, and I encourage you to, to, to don't wait. Get started today. Great. Okay, so we're going to uh, move on to the second part of our webinar, and we'll, of course, continue to take questions via chat, and uh, feel free to raise your hand if you want to talk with us at the end. Um, the second part of the presentation is going to get into our social tools integration, which is how we make it easy to use social media through eye contact. I'd like to introduce Matt Davis. Matt is a product owner here at iContact, and he leads our integrations team, which is a group of very brilliant engineers and designers who have helped design social tools. So Matt, it's all yours. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, really excited to show everyone our new social tools today. Uh, as some of you may know, we launched our first iteration of social tools back in January, uh, which allowed you to post your emails directly to your Facebook uh, either wall or fan page in addition to your Twitter account. This also opened up the door for web versions of your email, which makes them a lot easier to share uh, across social networks. We also introduced things such as the uh, Social Tools Archive share bar for people that land on those web-based emails. So today I'm really excited to show you the next the evolution of these tools. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So why more social tools? Well, first and foremost, our adoption for the release we had in January has been off the charts. We've got um, hundreds, even thousands of, of, of folks uh, adding their Facebook accounts uh, to, their, to their eye contact account, syncing their Twitter account, and so forth. So uh, we see a lot of people really uh, attempting here to tie their email marketing and social media marketing efforts together. Uh, so we really want to give them more power within our application. Uh, as Peter was uh, talking about earlier, a lot of our uh, SMB customers have been embracing social media marketing at a record pace. You know, the users on these networks, again, over 750 million users on Facebook, uh, it's been off the charts. Again, we also want to be competitive in the market. We realize that we're not the only email marketing solution out there that's uh, adopting social media features. And uh, we want to we wanna be the best in the business. And finally, it's our company goal uh, as a whole, to really become the industry leader in social media marketing. So uh, I've got a lot of really cool stuff to show you guys today. Um, but again, this is really just the tip of the iceberg as uh, we here at iContact uh, really push forward uh, with our social media marketing efforts. So the first thing that we're adding to social tools is integration of the Facebook like button. I'm sure many of you have seen this on uh, many websites and even uh, possibly have some emails. Uh, we're allowing you to now insert like buttons into your email messages using both of our content creation tools, which include Message Builder and Message Coder. Um, just for those of you who don't know, Message Builder is uh, more of a WYSIWYG type um, editor, whereas Message Coder is a more advanced uh, custom HTML editor for your emails. But we wanted the experience to be seamless between the two. We're auto-publishing to the Social Tools Archives. So what this means is if you add a like button to your email, 
for someone to like it and for it to be shareable, it needs to be published on the internet. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking the whole thought process out of that. So if you had a like button, there's no extra step for, oh my gosh, do I need to publish my email to the web? We do it for you, uh, as soon as you as soon as you add that like button, which is pretty cool. What this allows you to do is your recipients can now like your email message directly from their inboxes. They can comment it on Facebook if they like, but there is no more having to go to any kind of web version of your email first. The, the, the like process is completely seamless. It's uh, it's two steps. Uh, we don't make we don't want to make your recipients jump through any hoops. We want them to be able to like and share your content uh, as easily as possible. So the next major feature is Twitter integration. So very similar to the like, uh, this allows you to insert tweet buttons into your email content, again, using both of our message creation tools. Again, we auto-publish this to, the, to our social tools archives, so there's no need to worry uh, about whether or not your email is shareable if you have one of these buttons embedded within it. This allows your recipients to tweet a link to, your, to the web version of your email uh, directly from their inbox. They can also add uh, custom messaging if they like to go along with that. And what's really cool about our implementation uh, of, of tweets is that if you've already tweeted your email uh, when you sent it out and included your own custom tweet message and the link, you have your Twitter username, obviously it goes onto your, uh, onto your Twitter account, we will actually relay your original Twitter comment and your Twitter username when your subscribers retweet your email. So we'll, we'll sh I'll show an example of that in a minute, but that is something that not a lot of other solutions out there are offering. And what it does is it allows your subscribers really to continue to propagate your, propagate your messaging, uh, your brand, your Twitter username. Again, that links directly to your page on Twitter. Uh, so it's essentially more eyeballs on you, which is always good to have. So while likes and tweets, uh, adding these to your email, um, it's great, uh, but we realize that it's not nearly as valuable if, if you as, as a marketer can't really track the social impact of this. Uh, we really, we didn't want to just provide um, some little counters here on the sides. And this is a tweet, like and tweet, social analytics for this release, uh, we really dedicated a substantial amount of time and engineering uh, to go beyond a lot of solutions that are out there on the market today. First and foremost, we do give you the ability to track the total number of likes and tweets for each of your emails. As I was mentioning before, we do have our social archive share bar that we launched back in January. Uh, as some of you who may have been using our application uh, know, this already included a like and tweet, but in addition to a couple other options. But we wanted to make sure that even if you don't add a like and tweet button to your email, that the likes and tweets that were coming in from that share bar are still getting tracked uh, in addition to all the other ones on the page. So we didn't want to leave anything out, even if you have not embedded these. Uh, social buttons in your content. Secondly, we wanted to integrate uh, our social metrics all the way into our graph, this graphing displays in our tracking dashboard. We didn't want to tack this on uh, to our track page. Uh, so this is something we wanted to fully integrate throughout all of our graphs, as you'll see in a minute. We wanted to maintain an extremely high level of accuracy. We didn't want to assume that if somebody clicks like from their inbox but then drops off somewhere in the process that they really have liked it. So we really we count the true likes. Um, and finally, and this is perhaps the most powerful feature of our social analytics, is that we maintain uh, the like and tweet origin uh, by each individual communication channel. Now this includes direct email, Facebook posts, Twitter posts, in addition to other sources. Now this can get very complicated, so I'm going to show you guys a little diagram here and kind of break it down. So when you get started, you send your email out, you've got a recipient who's part of your subscribers, very similar to the diagram Peter showed earlier. And that recipient receives your email from the inbox. They now have the option to like or tweet it. If they like it or tweet it, it's going to go, their friends on Facebook will see it in their news feed. Their followers on Twitter will see that in addition to the link in their Twitter feed. And from there, those two groups also have the ability to like and tweet. And you get the idea this process can continue to exponentially grow and grow and grow. Now, the really cool thing about our like and tweet tracking is that no matter how complex this, this process, this flow goes, we source all of these likes and tweets back to your email message. Because really, at the end of the day, no matter how far this goes, this was a direct result and a direct impact, social impact, of the email that you actually sent out to your subscribers. Now, a similar, uh, similar concept here with Facebook posts. 
So you post your email directly to your Facebook fan page. All your fans and followers will see that new edition in their news feed. Um, now these fans and followers, let's just say they, they don't have to be subscribers uh, on your email list. They'll see this link, they can click through to it, they'll access the web version uh, of that email in the Social Tools Archive. They can then like and tweet it. It'll be then shared with their friends and followers. And you can see that the same, the same process applies here. And in the case of Facebook, these all get sourced back to your Facebook post. Uh, now the same concept applies for Twitter, uh, in addition to any other source as well, uh, which includes things like if you were to copy and, copy and paste the web URL into let's say an IM or any other way someone would hit that uh, web version of your email. Uh, but this is extremely powerful. Um, there are, are very few, if any, uh, email marketing solutions on the market today that tie all of these likes and tweets back, maintaining the point of origin back to the original communication channel. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a demo here and show you guys how this works. So here's my email, and before we get started, um, here's the email I'm actually going to do in the demo. We actually have a separate email uh, that we've created uh, for the webinar uh, that has like and tweet buttons already embedded in it, and we're actually going to send that out um, separately to everyone who's currently attending, and feel free to check it out and like, tweet it. And at the end of the demo, I'm actually going to come back and we can look in and see, uh, we can see how it's doing as far as likes and tweets and so forth. So I'm going to really quickly send that out now here in the background. And it's away. So be sure to keep an eye on your inboxes as we go through the demo. So now here's my newsletter. Uh, I'm Sunshine Travel, very big travel organization. I've got some killer deals here for July, the peak of vacation season. I really want to get the word out uh, to my subscribers and all my fans and followers on Twitter and Facebook. So here's my newsletter, it's looking pretty good, uh, but I want to make it a little bit more social. So let's add a like button. So I'm simply clicking any block in the email, I'll click right here in my header, and then I'll go up here to the new social tools drop down menu here that's in message builder, and I select add a like button for my email message, and boom, it's right there. That's how easy it is. If I want to add a tweet button, same thing, I go up here, I select add a tweet, and there it is. Now, as you can see, these are totally visible. These aren't these aren't lines of, of code in your in your email. Um, it, it really is what you see is what you get here. I can format these if I want to left align, just like any other image or text item on the page. I'll move this over a little bit. Uh, if I want to stack them, for instance, I can I can move them to another line. Uh, so I can really move these around as much as I want here. I'm going to make sure they get back on the same. Line. Uh, so we'll keep that up for my header. Now we also don't restrict you to uh, to adding more. So if you want to add, let's say, another like and tweet button on the bottom of your email, you know, for people that scroll all the way down, again, add a like, add a tweet button. There we go. And I can make sure these are centered, just to be nice here in the footer. Again, we can you can you really can tweak this uh, as much as you want. We really want it to give uh, you, you know, the content creator here, uh, you know, as much creative freedom as possible. So I'm happy with this. I've got my like and tweet buttons all ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and copy my text, and I can go ahead and proceed to send. Now, in the essence of time, I've already sent this out um, to, to a, some other folks. So I'm going to jump over here to my Gmail. And here's my Sunshine Travel News. I can open this up. Here's my images. You can see I've got my like and tweet buttons that I've added here. I've got my like and tweet in the footer. And to really quickly show you where we are right now with tracking for my contact, we'll go in here to track so we can see where our current tally is of likes and tweets. So here's our July newsletter demo. And right now it looks like one person's liked it. Um, so we've got one like. Um, so this is where our, our current analytics stand before I go in here. So we're going to jump over to Firefox, and I'll click like, and it's going to take me over here to the message archive. And there's Facebook. I can click like, and we're done. So that's liked here. Um, I can go ahead, and you can see it also, the like button grays out here at the bottom as well. And if I want to also tweet this, 
this is the share bar up here at the top for those that aren't familiar with it. So I'm going to actually tweet this from the share bar. And it's going to create a Twitter uh, pop-up. Now here's what I was talking about earlier. So this is the original tweet content that Sunshine Travel uh, entered when they sent out their email along with the tweet. So here's the original message custom content they added. Here's the link to their web version of their email. And here's their Twitter username, which also functions as a link to their Twitter profile once this gets published on Twitter. So I'm going to go ahead and tweet this now. And there we go. So now let me jump back again here to our eye contact tracking dashboard. I'm going to refresh the page. As you can see, I now have one total tweet, two total likes. I had one like before. And you can see all of these are coming in, obviously, at this point as a direct result of an email, because this was directly from a subscriber who liked and tweeted my content. So now I'm going to jump over to my evil twin, Ross Davis, who happens to be a friend of mine on Facebook and is also following me on Twitter. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to see that, oh, hey, look at this. Matt, Matt Davis, he likes this link here about the Sunshine Travel July News. I think I'm going to, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to go ahead and click this. And yeah, it's going to take me to the social, the, this email in the social tools archive. I can see that Matt liked it. I'm going to go ahead and like it. I am Matt's evil twin after all. And I'll go ahead and tweet it too. And I can even, again, the user doesn't have to. There's going to be situations where, you know, someone may not want the original content, but they can also add their own. Check this out. And again, but we still got your link and your username here, and I'll tweet it. And there we go. So now we can go back here to our tracking dashboard. Let's refresh. As you can see, we now have two total tweets and three total likes. But now if you notice that all those tweets and likes that I just did from Ross are showing up as a direct impact of the email source. So even though I came in on was Twitter and Facebook and was not a direct subscriber, this still got traced back to that first email and that first like and tweet that Matt put out um, from the original email. So you can see how likes and tweets are directly attributed back to their original communication channel. This is really cool. So just to simulate really quickly now as to what this would be like if let's say um, let's say you've got somebody who is not a subscriber but they're a fan of yours on Facebook. Uh, they see that, oh, hey, you know, Sunshine Travel, it looks like they've got some, a new newsletter here. Um, this is just someone who your updates are going to come through in the news feed. Um, they're going to see this as well, so they can click through. So I'll click through here on the newsletter. So this is now coming in from Facebook directly. This is, this is outside of any email um, directly from your Facebook post. So I'm going to go ahead and like it and tweet it. And we'll go back and we'll refresh the tracking page. We've now got three and four. And as you can see, the like and tweet that I just now did through the Facebook post gets attributed here to my Facebook channel. Really quickly, I'll go ahead and do this for Twitter, just so you guys can see. So this is Ross's Twitter account. As you can see, he's following Sunshine Travel here on Twitter. This is the tweet where they, they posted their email directly to Twitter. So all that a follower needs to do is click on the link here. And again, we can like, we can tweet. And now let's go back and just refresh. So you now see for our Twitter channel, we have one tweet and one like. Um, so that's, that, that's, that's pretty much how our tracking works. It's very powerful. It's going to show you um, all the likes and tweets per channel in addition to our existing metrics such as views, clicks, um, let me show you really quickly on how I've integrated this into our tracking dashboard. So as you can see here, we've got likes and tweets at the bottom of our high level uh, tracking graph here. We've got basically a one to three month breakdown of all of our metrics and we've also included likes and tweets down here as well. And these are all, these are all interactive so I can deselect these if I want to hide them. I can hide everything but likes and tweets, so I just want to see the relation here. Um, 
I have full control. I can toggle whatever I like. It's very, very interactive here. So we've fully baked this in to our existing tracking tools. We have not, we haven't tacked this on. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time and effort doing this because we feel that it really gives you a lot of power as far as measuring the social impact of your communication. So now let's take a look at the email we sent out. There's our webinar marketing email. So awesome, we've got 16 total tweets, 19 likes. Um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. We've got, um, you know, and I, and, and the reason why, by the way, in case you're wondering uh, why it's not showing Facebook and Twitter down here is because I only sent this out through email. So I actually did not post this email uh, to iContact's Twitter account or their Facebook account. Uh, so if you don't use uh, Facebook posting or Twitter posting, we actually uh, we, we, we don't we don't waste your space down here by showing you that. Um, and again, if we go back to our tracking dashboard, you can see actually I think I was here just now, uh, but you can see we've got all of the likes, tweets, how this breaks down uh, across everything. So that is the new social tools in a nutshell. Let's jump back over to the freezer real quick. And just a few key takeaways. The why social tools? What really makes uh, eye contacts uh, new social tools any better than, than any other solution on the market? Well, first and foremost, as I was showing you earlier, we really give you complete creative freedom as far as like and tweet button placement and design within your emails. We support like and tweet button um, editing within both our entry level uh, message builder application and our more advanced message coder application. The experiences between these two are completely seamless. When you insert a like or a tweet button, uh, we don't force you to add a, a row of five social buttons at the top or the bottom or, or put a bar in here or there. Um, you can add, if you only want a like button, you, could, you, you don't have to add a tweet button. If you want to add five like buttons, you can add five. We give you really as, as, as much freedom as you like uh, based on your content and your messaging. Uh, we track the likes and tweets by source. We break these out by email. Facebook posts, Twitter posts, and others, as you just saw. We maintain the origin as your message gets shared through different social channels. So all the likes and tweets, uh, all for every one of those, it maintains its origin. As you can see, we've integrated all of likes and tweets seamlessly into our existing tracking dashboard graphs. Um, everything is interactive and toggable, just like all of our existing tools. So that is the new eye contact social tools. At this time, let's go ahead and open up uh, for any questions. I've still got Peter here, so we're happy to take any that you may have. Okay, Matt. Um, first question comes from Christina. And Christina asks, can I choose just one part of my newsletter to like instead of the full newsletter? Good question, Christina. Uh, currently, we, our likes and tweets are, uh, with respect to the, your entire email message, uh, we are looking to add essentially content level likes and tweets uh, in the future. Right now, it is for your entire email message. Next question comes from Stephanie. She asks, what if you use your own code? Does this work only with templates? Another good question. This is not uh, template exclusive. Uh, if you use your own code, again, if you're a message coder, uh, the same process applies. We have the same drop-down button. And what that's going to do is it's going to just in in insert a small little string of code for a like button and then an additional string uh, for a tweet. Uh, it literally is just an FB like. It's we don't throw a lot of junk code in there. Um, so to answer your question, yes, you can totally add these into your existing custom code. Julie asks, can you track when someone views email from their phone? That's a good question. Currently, we do not support uh, mobile tracking, uh, but it's definitely something that that we want to look into in the future. Kenny asks, can you make the like or tweet buttons bigger? Depending on the browser you're in, you, you can. Uh, Facebook and Twitter actually recommend to uh, keep the, they have a standard uh, button and image size for each of their buttons. Um, in some browsers, we actually block this. In other browsers, you can expand the size. However, when you expand it, it's going to become very pixelated and probably not look that great. Um, so we recommend as a best practice that you actually keep your like and tweet button size uh, at the levels that uh, Facebook and Twitter recommend. Next question comes from Bob. Are the web versions of emails indexed by search engines so that if someone were to search for it, they could find it that way? No, that's a great question. At this point, we decided not to have them indexable um, by search engines. Um, we wanted to maintain some level of sort of privacy in case 
Um, folks did not want that, um, but that's a feature request we are getting. So it would definitely be something we could we would consider moving forward. Taylor asks, what other social tools do you recommend to use? So in terms of social networks, uh, definitely many businesses uh, are on LinkedIn, especially if you're B2B. Um, definitely if you have the time and, and money, uh, YouTube is helpful in terms of both a search engine and giving people a more rich uh, content with video. So it all depends on sort of what resonates with your audience or what you think will resonate um, in terms of what social networks you should use. Logan asks, can you send out a newsletter to just your followers on Facebook and Twitter and not to your uh, email contacts? If, if you had a separate, right now um, all of the newsletter sending it through iContact is done essentially through your email list in iContact. Um, assuming you had a list of those, uh, of the emails of your Facebook uh, fans, you could do that in a, in a separate list segment. Uh, but again, uh, with Facebook's, uh, some of their privacy regulations, they actually uh, advise that you not uh, you know, blast message a lot of people that are, that are fans of your page. Uh, but again, if you had email addresses for those folks or a, even a list segment of people that you knew were fans on Facebook, uh, you definitely could create a separate list segment and then send a customized newsletter to those people. Keith asks, getting the Facebook like square with faces in it, is that a Facebook tool or I contact? I think he's referring to the, the slide Let's you showed connect. here. Yes. I think you can use Facebook to grab a, images of your Facebook uh, fans. And what I would recommend you do is you, you can take that tool or use that tool from Facebook and, and take a screenshot of, of those images or just take a, a screenshot of a block of those images and put it in your email newsletter. So that would be the way I would recommend that you do that. It's very, it's very difficult to have that essentially live updating. Uh, the, the example Peter showed in his slide uh, if you go on the Facebook developer page, they actually have a lot of sort of code snippets that you can embed into your website. Um, works great on a web page. Unfortunately, it has a lot of uh, JavaScript in it, which is not really functional in email. It's not within your email uh, clients, uh, whether it be Gmail or uh, Outlook. Uh, you don't have that sort of live dynamic functionality. Um, so it's a little more difficult to embed that, those kind of things in email. So like Peter was saying, um, you can definitely embed that into your uh, your code on your website, and then you know within you know the most recent uh, time, I guess you could take a screenshot of that, insert it into your email, and attach a link to that to your Facebook page or something. Lawrence asks, are any of these tools limited to paid eye contact accounts? Great question. Uh, please send out that these are available to all eye contact customers, including those using eye contact free edition. Uh, trial users and full paid users. Joy asks, how do I connect my iContact account to our social media account? So if you're using iContact right now, if you click up on the top right of your screen, you should see your, your username. And essentially there's a, uh, a setting for called social settings. So very quickly, let's jump back into iContact here. So right now I'm signed in as Flo Fargo. She's uh, the head boss at Sunshine Travel. So there's this option here for social tool settings. So what this will let me do is right now I've got my Twitter account uh, enabled and Facebook and so forth. So I can go in here. Right now they're all enabled, obviously. Uh, if I were to disable these, I could re-enable and I could enter in essentially just my Twitter name and password, same for Facebook. And then once these are enabled, uh, whenever I post my email uh, to Facebook or Twitter, it's automatically going to post to the account that I have synced here in my settings. Uh, Sean asks, when someone likes an email, is it posted to their Facebook page? It is posted to their Facebook wall, and it is also posted uh, to any of their friends' uh, news feed who, who obviously are friends with them. Anna asks, can I put a YouTube video in an iContact email, or do I have to use a link? Uh, at this point, you would need, I believe you would need to put a link uh, directly to YouTube. Julie asks, regarding tracking, what is the difference when someone forwards email by eye contact or independently? So we track when someone clicks the forward to a friend link that's provided by eye contact, that is tracked by eye contact. When someone in their email client just hits the forward button and sends it, we cannot track that. So it makes it a little bit harder when they, when they do that option or select that option. Yeah, we're hoping that, you know, that, that, again, that's a 
you know, a lot of people in the habit of just using the forward button in their email client. We're hoping with the addition of some of these social buttons and social tools and things like the forward to a friend link in the email, uh, that, that hopefully more recipients will start using those, which makes um, all those interactions much easier to track. Kuesi asks, does iContext Facebook integration facilitate the join email list tab that was previously shown? So that's a great question. That join email list uh, tab is, is essentially a sign-up form that you can create. Um, we actually have a Facebook application, so you need to install that Facebook application, and then you can create a sign-up form within iContact, associating it with your Facebook page, your fan page, and then that'll create the, the sign-up form on your Facebook fan page. Uh, there's a blog post that we've written fairly recently um, that actually goes step by step on that entire process. And we'll show you right now where to find that. If you go to iContact.com, and you go, you can click right on this banner that says get the word out, mm -hmm, right there. And this is our social tools page. It has lots of great information about getting started using social media. Um, the blog article that Peter's referring to is in the bottom right. And it's right there under Installing Eye Contact Facebook Applications. So you can follow that as your step-by-step -step guide to putting a sign-up form right on your Facebook page. In addition, that we also do believe that a sign-up form is a best practice when combining social media and email marketing together. You've gotten people to read your posts on Facebook and via Twitter, and then you get them to subscribe to your mailing list so they can get your, your emails directly going forward. Next question comes from Maryland. Sorry, Marilyn, do we have to change our Facebook password each time we change it on Facebook and iContact also? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, iContact is not, cannot go out and, and, and automatically know when you changed your Facebook. So it's much like if you change, let's say you're using Gmail uh, and you're using a desktop email client, you're going to need to change your, you know, for instance, in that case, you need to change your Gmail password in your client. So the same concept applies here with iContact. So if you change your login or email or your password in Facebook or Twitter, uh, you would need to go into your social settings and eye contact, uh, disable the account that's currently set up, and then essentially re-enable it with your new credentials. Jason asks, one more question. When, you are, when, you guys are, when are you guys planning on rolling these new social tools out? Uh, these social tools are available today. Um, so if you go and create any messages in eye contact, you can immediately uh, drop any like or tweet button into your email content. And that does not actually require, by the way, that, that, that you have a presence on uh, Facebook or Twitter uh, if you're just wanting to add like or tweet buttons to your emails. Uh, the ability to publish your email to Facebook and Twitter, uh, again, we launched that back in January. So all these, uh, all these tools are available today. Tim asks, what kind of page would you recommend for a non-for-profit high school alumni page? I assume he's referring to what kind of Facebook page. Yes, actually, Facebook has a page um, a place where you can go and actually see the types of pages that they have, and you, they'll recommend the type of page you should cr create based on whether or not you're a nonprofit or a business or a community organization um, or a personal a personal profile page. So definitely, you can create one. Uh, Facebook has recommendations and guidelines on what type of page to uh, to create. Recommend you just do a little bit of research from Facebook, but they have those guidelines. Okay. Well, we'd like to thank everyone for your time today. We hope you learned a little bit more about social media and, and using email marketing together. Um, again, we have a lot of resources to help you out as you uh, start using social media or you start uh, trying to leverage it a little bit more for your business. Just a reminder that we do have a lot of resources available to help you. Uh, we do have the social tools page, which we showed just a few minutes ago that has lots of great resources on it. And we have an award-winning customer service team that's always uh, standing by ready to help you out with, uh, with, your, with your email marketing and social media marketing. Again, we're always available on Twitter and Facebook, so if you want to chat with us there, feel free, and we'll get back to you right away uh, from that channel as well. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.